if Ephesians chapter 6, if you will. Boy, isn't the day a beautiful day? My goodness, what a beautiful day God's given us. I, I do think about our, our fellow Texans, though, that have been flooded out this week. And boy, I tell you, what a difficult situation that would be. And, and of course, I know it's not just in Texas, other people, but boy, we, we feel for those folks. And remember them in prayer as they face uh, that mess that comes from flooding. So uh, uh, you pray for them if you would, and I hope you will do so. Ephesians 6, if you will, look at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We'll leave off reading there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask you to help me this morning to preach the message that I believe you want me to preach today. And Lord, I pray we'd have good attention. I know there's distractions. I know there's maybe plans for this afternoon, plans for later. But Lord, just for the next half hour or so, could you just help us today that we might focus our hearts and our minds on the Word of God and on what might you might say to us today. And Lord, use this service to make a difference in the life of everyone that's here. First in your name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Uh, I, I'll remind you that the book of Ephesians was a letter. It was written as a letter to a church, to a local church in Ephesus, a city over in Asia Minor. You say, well, I don't even know where it was. Well, don't worry about it, okay? I want you to consider it this way. Though it was written to a church, it was written to a local church filled with people. You know what? It's written to a church just like this church. Uh, with a diverse group of people. And uh, what we see now as we come, notice the first word in verse 10, finally. The Apostle Paul's coming to the end of that letter. Yes, sir. He's coming right now to the end of this letter that he's writing to this church. And uh, this is the letter <coughs> where the Apostle Paul made very plain that salvation is by grace through faith. Amen. Boy, I, I see people and I listen to people that teach other methods and other means of salvation and I think how can you mess it up Amen. when it's so plain in the word of God you know for by grace are you saved through faith yes, sir. that not of yourselves it's the gift of God Amen. well what a blessing it is well that's in this book alright it was in this letter that he revealed that the Jew and the Gentile were one body in Jesus Christ Amen. you say well that's no big deal well it was then it was then, all right? It, it's in this letter that he talks about the walk of the believer and how we're to walk before our Lord. And uh, man, uh, there, there's so many things here that are so practical. But now he comes to the end of the book and he says, finally, he said, I want to wind it up. And he says this, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Well, I want you to think about that. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Listen, spiritual strength is an absolute necessity. I'm preaching by and large to a group of people sitting here this morning. For the most part, you're saved. Not everyone, but for the most part, people sitting here, you've been born again. You've trusted Christ as your Savior. Listen, for you to live the Christian life, you must be strong in the Lord. It is an absolute necessity. Now, it's been the way of man, though, to glory in physical strength. Uh, hey, we're impressed by physical strength. Uh, we're just impressed by it. Little kids like to brag about it. And some that aren't so little, all right? Uh, they, we just like to do it. Today, they have the world's strongest man competition. Now, I'll be honest with you, I look at that and I consider I could do that. Not very well, but I could do that. Now, we like to look at those things and we like to consider it. Uh, 
I, I remember, I mean, uh, we're, we're impressed by physical strength. I, I've seen people that are able to take a, a telephone book. Now, not the telephone book from Vidalia, Georgia, where I was born when I was a kid. But they're able to take one like the Fort Worth telephone book and grab a hold of two hands and rip that thing in half. I just be honest with you, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I, I can crush an aluminum can. Amen. But, uh, you know, I can't rip a telephone book in half. But it, it's impressive. Physical strength's impressive. But I want to say this to you, all right? It matters not how physically strong you are. That physical strength's going to fade. Yes, sir. Now, you can try to put off, mm -hmm. but it's, that's going to fade away. Yes, sir. I, I've mentioned to you before, uh, years ago, man, I, I guess... Gee whiz, probably been 52 years ago. I was probably about 10 and, and, and in Vidalia, Georgia, and Paul Anderson came to town. Paul Anderson was known then. He was in the Guinness Book of World's Record for, as the world's strongest man. And as far as I know, still holds the record for the most poundage lifted in one lift. In a back lift, he lifted over 6,000 pounds. You said, that's impossible. Well, it's documented that he did it. And he was, man, he was just, he was a chunk, all right? I, I remember seeing him come, boy, he, uh, we, we talked about his neck, but really his, his, his head just kind of merged with his shoulders, you know, his neck was so big, and man, he was just colossal, just a huge fella, all right? Now, not this kind of rippled muscles like you see on, you know, physique competition, but... Man, uh, he, he had the strength to do lifting barbells. And I remember there was a just a normal guy there and he tried to pick up one end of the barbell. And he couldn't get it off the ground. Old Paul Anderson take that thing, whoop it overhead, you know, and do several repetitions. Well, very strong individual, but the last part of his life he spent in a wheelchair. Because his body and his strength was robbed from him by disease. Right. Now listen to me. You can have the greatest physical strength, but that physical strength is going to diminish. Amen. You you may be here saying, I'm in the prime of my life. Man, I could make that muscle jump up on my arm. Good for you. Right. But I'm going to tell you this, it'll pass away. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else. Spiritual strength is needed more Amen. than physical strength. Because spiritual strength will take you farther than physical strength will. And it will stay with you, it will remain longer, or at least it can, than physical strength. Hey, physical strength, as you get to a certain age, you peak and it diminishes, it goes downhill. All right, it goes downhill. Spiritual strength doesn't have to do that. As a matter of fact, you can lay on your deathbed as spiritually strong as you could be when you were 25, 30 years old, if you so desire. It doesn't have to diminish. You see, spiritual strength is not like physical strength. Physical strength, you have to just be gifted. Now, to a certain extent, you do. Uh, you could say, well, I'm going to prepare myself for the Olympics. Old Christian back here, uh, Christian back here rides our bus and he can decide, I'm going to become an Olympic weightlifter. Right. Now the chances are he would not be able to do that well no matter how hard he worked at it. You said, well, what are you giving him a hard time for? He just wasn't, look, Paul Anderson was able to develop the strength he had because of the body type he had, the size, everything, and it just all fit together yes, good. And he could do that. But that's not everybody, okay? No matter how much time you spent in the gym and no matter how much iron you pumped, you're just not going to be able to develop it. It's just got to be there. But if you work at it, you can develop it and it can grow. But wait a minute. Spiritual strength comes from God. Amen. It comes from Him. It comes from having a close, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It comes with walking with God. That's the way you develop that spiritual strength. We draw strength from Him. It doesn't come from within us. Amen. I used to go to powerlifting meets. 
and it was enjoyable to me to go. There was a time that I pumped iron. Now I pump stainless steel, all right? But I used to pump iron. And, and I would go to those powerlifting meets, and I, I remember seeing those guys come out, and they would try to psych themselves up to lift this amount of weight. And, and they would go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they'd come out, man, and they'd put that, uh, they, they'd put that chalk on their hands, and, man, they're breathing, and, and they're doing everything they get on there. And it really, it could be funny. Yes, sir. It could be very funny. But you want to be careful about laughing at a guy that could crush you, all right? So you kind of be gentle, you know, about it. But it could be very funny to watch those guys, and they would do all that. But what they were doing was they knew I've got to bring it in from within and convince myself and be able to put this weight up. Right. Get it off the floor. And you can do it, but wait a minute. Yeah. Spiritual strength doesn't come from within. It comes from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It comes from Him. We draw strength from Him. It's really His strength that we're able to appropriate for ourselves. And we do it by faith. By faith. By faith we trust Him. By faith we believe Him. And as we begin to exercise that faith, and we begin to walk with Him, and we walk with Him day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year, we begin to develop. And that spiritual strength increases. Yeah. Yeah. And we're able to face the things that need to be faced. All right? But because we exercise that faith. Let me give you an example in the Bible. There was a guy named Moses. Moses was strong enough to go and confront Pharaoh. Right. Amen. Confront Pharaoh. You remember that story, right? You remember how Moses, God called Moses, and Moses said, you got the wrong fella. I'm a man of slow speech. God said, okay, I'll give you Aaron. Aaron can go with you. He's got smooth talking fella, and he, he'll go with you, and he'll take care of that. But you know, when you get in the Bible and you study it out, you never see Aaron say a word. Moses exercised his faith. Yeah. He had some spiritual strength. He walked with God. Yeah. And he was able to confront Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out. Yeah. And, and able to stand there on the Red Sea and stick that rod out. You said, well, that didn't take much. Wait a minute. Oh. You realize how many people were watching Moses when he did that? Yeah. Realize how many people were going to make fun of him if it didn't work? Man, he'd have been the laughing stock of over a million people. But he stretched that out. Where'd that strength come from? It came from God. Amen. Had that spiritual strength. I'll tell you about a fellow named Joshua. Joshua followed Moses. Amen. Joshua had the spiritual strength to lead the nation of Israel across the Jordan River to, uh, to capture and to take the land of Canaan. Hey, where'd that spiritual strength came from? Well, because he was just a spiritual giant. No, he got it from God. Right. He got it from God. Hey, listen to me. The same God they serve is the same God we serve. Amen. The Bible said there's no respect to persons with God. Right. That spiritual strength that was available to them is available to you. Right. And the truth of the matter is, hey, spiritual strength is necessary. You say, why? Because we fight. Amen. A spiritual battle. We fight a spiritual battle. Our greatest enemy is not Iran. Okay? Our greatest enemy is not radical Muslims. Our greatest enemy is not Hillary Clinton. It's not Donald Trump. It's not whoever you might think of. Can I say this to you? It's not somebody sitting here. We're not your enemy, okay? Yeah. It's not the bum that may be your next door neighbor that you can't get along with and can't put up with. Right. Hey, the greatest enemy you've got is Satan. The yeah. Bible tells us he's our adversary yes, and he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's the enemy. Right. Look at verse 12 here in, in uh, Ephesians 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. It's not some individual. It's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness, the Bible says, in high places. That's the enemy. That is our warfare. 
That is the thing that makes it sometimes so difficult. It's not somebody you can put a face to. Maybe when you were a kid in school, there was an enemy. There was somebody did not like you and you did not like. And, and maybe you, you knew that person was there and you knew that's the enemy. But as a Christian, our warfare is not that way. All right? We, <coughs> we war against spiritual wickedness. That wickedness is instigated by Satan. Right. We fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's controlled by Satan. Amen. All right? We have a tussle every day with our own flesh that seeks to follow those powers of evil. Hey, why? Because uh, it is the flesh. It likes to sin. Folks, I'm going to tell you everything that's right that the child of God seeks to do is going to be opposed by some power, somehow, somewhere. All right? It's going to be opposed. Now, usually, it will be some human instrument that's the face of that opposition, but make no mistake about your real enemy. Hey, can I point it out? It's not this preacher. I'm not your enemy. I, I'm not it. It's not some other Christian that you've got somehow or another crossways with for whatever reason. That's not your enemy. Amen. This battle we're in is a spiritual battle. We fight spiritual powers. Right. And, and that's what opposes us, okay? Listen, I encourage you. I'm going to the polls. I voted... Uh, a week or so ago in the primary, I will vote again in the runoff. There's a runoff coming up with some offices. I do plan to vote again in November if God lets me live. I will vote, all right? But I'll be honest with you, our, en our enemy, whichever side you're on, our enemy's not the Democrats, it's not the Republicans. The truth of the matter is the enemy of this country is not the liberals, it's not the conservatives. Hey, it's Satan. It's Satan. And the reason we struggle, the reason we have the fights and the trouble that we have is because we face a spiritual enemy. We face a spiritual enemy. Too often, we try to cure our problems without dealing with the spiritual level. We try to cure our problems just dealing on the physical level. All right, that's the only one we deal with. People who have, for instance, people have drug addictions or they're, they're uh, uh, drunk. They're an alcoholic. They, they try to deal with that part of it, but they don't deal with the underlying problem. The underlying problem is a spiritual problem, okay? It's a spiritual problem. We've had a Christian school. This is our 40th year. In those 40 years now of dealing with people, I found out over the years when I have a problem with a, with a student, when I have a problem with a kid in school, there, there's always an underlying spiritual problem. Every time. Every time. And that's true in your life. That's true in your life. It's a spiritual battle that we're in. Therefore, the Bible comes to us and says, you know what? You need to be strong in the Lord. Amen. You need to be strong in the Lord. That relationship that you have with Him needs to be super strong. Amen. We cultivate relationships with people. We cultivate relationships with people. <clears throat> Some people try to get close to people who have money. And they will cultivate that relationship with somebody because that individual has money. And, and I want to get some of that money, so I work at it. That's the only reason I'm friends with Brother Hawkins. All right? He doesn't have any money, all right? So, so I'm not his friend anymore. But anyway, I used to be. Okay. But I found out. No, but people do that. Yes, sir. Some people cultivate relationships with people because they have a position. Yes, sir. With a position. And they think, if I can get close to that individual, it will help my career. Hey, wait a minute. The best one we need to get close to is our Lord. Amen. We need to cultivate a relationship with Him. Listen, I'm going to tell you, you're going to face some things in this life. And you're going to need to be strong in the Lord. 
I want you to see this, all right? There is a promise and also a problem that we have in this spiritual battle. Would you look again at verse 10? I've said this over and over. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. But notice the rest of that verse says, and in the power of his might. What a promise there is, the power of his might. Do you realize that that is available to you? It's available to you and I who are saved. Now, wait a minute. I'm not some charismatic guy that gets up and says, if you'll just do this, man, you can conquer the world. All right? No, not that kind of stuff. But I believe with all my heart, the power of His might is available to us. The only question is, is whether or not we'll avail ourselves of that power. Whether we will walk with Him and we will develop that relationship or we'll get strength from Him and we'll be able to face the problems we have and go on in the face of those problems. Hey, listen, if you're strong in the Lord, you can face some problems. But we have a, we've got the promise, but there's the problem. The problem is this old flesh in which we live. There is in this flesh in which we live a decided inclination that says, I don't need any help. I can do it myself. I don't need your help. Don't need you to help me. My favorite story in my life of that is when I was probably five years old. And I was climbing up a ladder and jumping off of the ladder. And y'all have heard me tell this. But it fits. It fits right here. I mean, I would step up on one rung of the ladder. My brother was there and a friend or two of his, I think. And I jumped, stepped up on the ladder and they were older than me. So I needed to impress them. You know how that is in life. You have to impress people. And so here I was, the youngest guy in the group. And I thought, I will impress them. So I stepped up on the bottom rung of that ladder that was leaning against the Sunday school building of the church. And I jumped off of it. Yeah, <laughs> look at me. I climbed then up to the second rung and I jumped off of it. Yay, look at me. I'm going up one more rung. And one of my brother's friends, I think it's one of them, said, hey, you want me to hold this clothesline out of the way? Nah, don't worry about that. That's one thing in life I've never forgotten. Because I jumped off the third rung. Look at me. And I was dangling on the clothesline all of a sudden. Without benefit of any clothespins, all right? And man, I jumped off and it was a wire clothesline. I don't know why my parents used dangerous stuff like that. And I jumped off. Man, I hung myself on the clothesline. I'm dangling there and it was pretty strong. And my brother and his friends just watched. And then I dangled long enough till my feet went this way far enough and I fell off the clothesline. And man, I hit the ground flat on my back and all the air that was with me came out. And I spent the next three days, it seems like, going, uh, 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 trying to breathe. You know what? If I ever jump off a ladder again, I'm going to say, if there's anything close, would you hold it back? Actually, I found out you're not supposed to jump off a ladder, all right? I learned that at a young age. But see, that old flesh says, I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. Oh, yes, you do. You see, you're going to face some things in life you can't handle by yourself. You're going to need to be strong in the Lord. Some of you just going to need to be strong in the Lord. There's going to come some difficulties you're going to face sometimes. You're going to, <clears throat> you're going to go into a doctor's office and you're going to hear him say, You've got this dread disease. Yes, sir. Brother, uh, I, I was talking to Brother Marshall this week on the phone. He was talking about going in and have some tests run. And he said, he said, I've got good news and bad news. I called him and asked, I've got good news and bad news. He said, they ran the test. He said, you know that disease? Yep. Yeah. Well, the good news is they know about it. The <laughs> bad news is you got it. All right. You got that problem. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, that's the way it is in life. Yes, You're going to need to be strong in the Lord. You're going to need to be strong in the Lord. I've seen people go to pieces when they get bad news. I've seen other people go, okay, 
<coughs> okay. Amen. Hey, listen. Strong in the Lord. You're able to face some things. You're able to take on some problems in life. Hey, some of you right now need to be strong in the Lord. Maybe you're battling over the matter of tithing. The devil says, man, you don't need to do that. You, you don't need to. It's not necessary. Look, uh, God's got plenty of money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And that's what the Bible says. He doesn't need your money. And that's true, but you need to give it. You need to give it. So we struggle over those kind of things. You say, how am I going to settle it? Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Boy, you're going to come to a problem in life one of these days you're going to come to a situation and things are just going to seem like they're all wrong and the old devil's going to come along to you and say hey why don't you just quit why don't you just quit nobody appreciates you nobody sees what you do nobody encourages you nobody's grateful for it nobody it is everybody ignores it now uh, things aren't going the way you think they should anyway just fold it up so what do you need to do you need to be strong in the lord amen you need to be strong in the Lord. Look, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get discouraged. I remember sometimes raising my kids, I got discouraged. I thought about, well, Lord, if you can't raise them right, I'll just kill them. And then not to worry about it, all right? I got discouraged. And I can remember, I can remember getting on my knees and saying, now, God, i got to have some help. I've got to have some help. you, you got to help me. Hey, listen, it requires that. You've got to be strong in the Lord. You, you may come to a different time, difficult time in marriage. You may come to that time and that, that place in marriage and, and that there's a problem. And you say, what are you going to do? Well, you need to be strong in the Lord. Remember, you need to do what God says do. You just need to do that. You need to do it. Uh, boy, we live in a day where people struggle with rebellion against authority. So what are we going to do? We need to be strong in the Lord and do what God says to do. You need to quit being rebellious. You need to quit being so honorary. You need to do what God wants you to do. Take Him at His word. Trust Him. Follow Him. So I just can't see how it's going to work out. That's all right. Be strong in the Lord. In the power of His might. I'm thinking of old Joshua. He led the nation of Israel, they crossed Jordan on dry land. The only problem was the first thing they came to was the city of Jericho. And here was this great walled city that needed to be conquered. And I'm sure Joshua got out and began to think, how can we do this? And God said, Joshua, i got it figured out. Here's the plan. Now for six days, you're going to take your army and you're going to march around the city one time. Joshua says, and, and, that's it. Those six days, each one of those days, you march around the city one time. And then on the seventh day, you're going to march around the city seven times. Okay. And then you're going to have everybody shout. Okay, Lord. And I'll take care of it after that. How would you feel as a military leader? Yeah, Going to all your captains and all the men under you and said, here's our plan for conquering this city. All right, fellas. Uh, tomorrow we're going to march around the city once. Okay. Then what? That's all. That's all we're going to do. By the way, we're going to do that six days. Huh? Yeah, that's all we're going to do six days. And then he said on the seventh day, we're going to march around seven times. We're going to shout. And God said he'd take care of it after that. We'll just... It'll be take care. Did you ever hear about the little boy? He came home from Sunday school. His mom and dad asked him, said, what did you learn today in Sunday school? He said, well, we learned about Joshua taking, conquering and the nation of Israel, the army of Israel conquering Jericho. Well, how would they do that? Well, they brought in all the howitzers and they brought in all the airplanes and man, they came in and they strafed the city and they bombed it and, and they, they were able to go in with their machine guns and just kill everybody. And dad said, son, is that really what they said? No, dad, but if I told you what they said, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> See, that's our problem. 
we're not strong in the Lord, we're strong in our own mind. And we think, I'll do it my way. Old Frankie Sinatra got real famous singing the song, I did it my way. Yeah, and what a colossal mess he made of it, huh? Yes, sir. I wouldn't trade places him with him right now for any any amount of money. No, none whatsoever. He said, well, of course not, preacher. He's dead. Yeah, but from every indication, he's not just dead. He's in hell. But he did it his way. His way. Hey, listen to me. You need to be strong in the Lord. Not in the power of your might. But in his. Be strong in his might. Maybe some are here this morning, you're dealing with Holy Spirit conviction about your soul. God's dealing with you. You know you're lost without a Savior. You've never trusted Christ. Listen to me. Without Him, you know. You know, according to the Bible, you'll split hell wide open. And the Bible said you'll be tormented there forever and ever. Listen, you know that. But the devil's telling you, put it off. Put it off. Hey, there's tomorrow. There's tomorrow. You, you can do that next week. You know, don't worry about it. Hey, don't let that preacher, you don't have to do what he says. Don't let him scare you. Hey, listen, that's not necessary. By the way, you don't have to go through all that stuff he says. If you're just sincere, you'll be all right. In spite of the fact, the Bible says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. That's what Jesus said. He said, I am the door. Right. Now, you're sitting here this morning. You're dealing with Holy Spirit conviction about your soul. You know what you need to do? You need to quit listening to the devil. You need to quit trusting you. And you need to trust Christ. Yes. You need to trust Him. Now, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? There's some here you're struggling with sin. You're struggling with some sin. Hey, you know what? Nobody knows it but you. Nobody knows you. Mom doesn't know it. Dad doesn't know it. The husband doesn't know it. The wife doesn't know it. Your friends don't know it. Other church members don't know it. But you're struggling with some sin. And it's, it's, it's eating at you. And you're having a time of it. And you need to quit listening to the old flesh. You need to quit listening to your body. You need to be strong in the Lord. You need to decide, hey, I need to get this right. I need to avail myself of the power of His mind. Hey, but the question is, will you do it? Will you trust the Word of God? Are you going to decide to give in to the powers of darkness, the power of evil? Hey, what's it going to be, my friend? Look, it's, it's your decision. I can't make you do a thing in the world. I'm here presenting to you the truth. I'm challenging you and saying, hey, you need to be strong in the Lord. The day's going to come. You're going to face a trial unlike anything you've ever imagined. Right. You need to be strong in the Lord. That's how you face those kind of things. You need to be strong in the Lord. You just take it. Man, I, I've heard of people that lost their whole family. The whole family. Just like that. He said, how do they survive? Strong in the Lord. Amen. Strong in the Lord. That's how, that's how you face troubles. That's how you face conflict. That's how you face disappointment. That's how you face tragedy. That's how you face defeat. This morning I flipped the television on just for about five, maybe ten minutes as I was getting ready. The first picture on the TV screen was down on I-20 where a van had run into a diesel tractor trailer. And they said it split the van open. I mean, it was, you could, it looked like you'd taken a saw from the vision, the view I saw, and just sawed that van in half. One person dead, four carried to the hospital, two in critical condition. I never hear that without thinking somebody Amen. is about to get some terrible yes, sir. news. Amen. Somebody's about to get a call or somebody's going to knock on their door some terrible news. Unexpected. And they're going to say, are you so-and-so? Yes. Do you know so-and-so? Well, I, I have to inform you they just were killed in a car wreck. How do you face that? Well, if you're strong in the Lord, you can do it. Strong in the Lord, you can do it. I think of Job. I think old Job that day. 
they came to him and they said, listen, all of your flocks have been stolen. All of your, basically that means all of your wealth is gone. It's all been stolen, it's gone. Man, it wasn't too long right behind that, somebody comes along and says, your children were eating together and there was a terrible storm and there was a collapse, all of your children are dead. The Bible tells us, Job said, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, how in the world could somebody say that? They were strong in the Lord. They trusted God. Now, my friend, just the truth of the matter is, who are you trusting today? Who are you trusting? Uh, I'm convinced there's a lot of people trusting the Democratic Party. There's a lot of people trusting the Republican Party. There's a lot of people today trusting the government. A lot of people today trust in themselves. They beat their chest, say, I can do it, and I don't need any help. Listen. You need to be strong in the Lord. The day's coming. You'll need it. Do you need to come to Him this morning? Do you need to come confess sin? Do you need to get back close to Him because you've gotten away from Him? Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you know, and God knows, that you've never trusted Christ. You've never been born again. And if you were to die like that, the Bible says you'll split hell wide open. You know that. Won't you come to him today? I know the devil says, don't listen, don't listen. You don't need to do that. You got time. But you may not have time. The only day you've got is today. You just hope you've got tomorrow. The only day I've got is right here. What are you going to do with it? Would you stand please with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning? God dealing with you. Listen, we're in a spiritual battle. It's on every side, on every front, every hand. We fight a spiritual battle. And I got news for you, you're not strong enough to whoop the devil on your own. He'll whoop you every time. Every time. If you're here this morning without Christ, won't you come to him today? Won't you step out and we begin to sing, come meet me here at the front and say, Preacher, I want to trust Christ as my Savior. Won't you do that? Christian, you're here, but you realize and you know the truth is you're not where you ought to be with God. Won't you come to Him today? It's hard to be strong in the Lord when you're away from Him. Very hard to be strong in the Lord. God's speaking to you this morning. Maybe their sin needs to be confessed. Nobody knows it, but you know it. God knows it. That's all that's necessary. Would you do it today? God dealing with you. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Heavenly Father, use the invitation, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.